All right, all right, all right. Today we're gonna treat this little area here. Doesn't look like it's an issue, but it is. Goeiemorgen mense. Okay, today we're gonna treat another hydrophobic area in my garden. There's that little patch right behind me over there. And from the angle that I showed it to you at just now, it didn't look so bad. So let me show you from the other side. Okay, well, number one, we're in autumn, so things are drying up quite quickly. But yeah, you can see it very clearly. Now, this has always been an issue for me. I already know what the problem is. But we're going to go through the motions today to determine what this could be or could mean for you. So how do I already know what's going on in my yard? Well, it's my yard, so I read my lawn like I always preach in the videos. Read your lawn, know what's going on. Sometimes it's not so simple. You kind of need to know what else might be going wrong to determine what your actual issue may be. For example, sometimes if you get spots like that, it may not be a hydrophobic issue. Mine is because of a sprinkler that doesn't uh, hit there correctly. I don't get an overlap. So I know that that top half of my yard is an issue because of these things. Um, I have checked for other issues beneath the soil, not as deeply as what I should, but general uh, surface debris like um, biggish rocks and that kind of thing that are only, you know, relatively shadow, the sort of five centimeters below the ground, not little pebbles, rocks, like bigger, bigger rocks. They can also cause these types of issues, building rubble, that kind of thing. In my case, it's those sprinklers. Uh, in your case, it could be an insect issue or a disease so you need to look out for those things so let's quickly talk about all of the scenarios that could lead to something looking like that and then we will discuss how to treat the hydrophobic issue that i've got and what you should do to look out or test for the other issues okay so let's start with what you do to look out for disease the very first thing that you do is that you look you go up to the grass blade and you pick out a leaf, one that's mostly grown. You have a close look at it, you look for any funny discoloration, spots, any of that, uh, you know, if you're looking stuff, that is an indication that you may have some form of disease. We're not going to go through disease identification now. Some diseases uh, do not come in these big patches like this. Some of them come in little spots, uh, some are circular, some are sort of natural shapes. Uh, some are lines and those lines could even mean something else but for disease identification the first thing for you to do is look at that little blade of grass and just look for anything that looks really abnormal with it, it will be spots it will be like a maybe a reddish or a whitish powdery substance on it and from that you can identify what our disease you may have um, and then you can treat specifically for that and for your grass type as well. Uh, there will be different products for different diseases. Some of them are sort of generic broad spectrum things. You can use those as well. But the best thing to do is always get some extra advice along with that or do some extra research. Now just talking just a little bit further about this blade of grass it brings us to our next subject and that is insect damage. Now insect damage can also show you the little spots and patches the weird stuff this angle is quite nice now because the way the sun's hitting it you can see it's quite dry but what you'll notice with insect damage is that the grass may not be this single blade of grass that you pull out you must actually just now sort of generically do a broad coverage uh, look at everything and just see if you can see any insect damage and that will be that the physical plant is being eaten and if it's being eaten on the top it's often going to be insects like caterpillars and that kind of thing and then you can treat for those and if it's in patches another way to do it is to grab the grass and give it a good old tug and if it feels loose and it pulls right out of the ground quite easily then you may have had a, maybe a grub issue or something like that that will happen from underneath they eat the roots and then the grass is able to come out quite easily and again in my circumstance that's not the case now how else can you test for insects well let's have a look at that Okay, and this is it, the plain old soap test. So the soap test is just regular old dish soap. Ideally, you want to get something that's um, lemon scented. Insects tend to hate the lemon stuff, and I think mint as well. I just don't know many mint dishwashing liquids, but lemon scented stuff is generally quite good. Now, this one here you can see is antibacterial. Now, you can use those which are not antibacterial. Uh, it, 
the amount of damage that we're doing i mean any of this type of stuff is far less than the damage that the actual insects are doing uh, in your lawn so forget about that portion of it for now your ground will come right again quickly even if you put down an antibacterial soap it's uh, as long as there's water movement it will be fine and you're only using a little bit of this in a bucket like this to do the test so the first things first as you can see i put in a good squeeze of the stuff i am then going to fill it up with water Okay, so there we have our full bucket of soapy water and you can see now I've changed sides because I want you to be able to see the next portion of this test and that is that you don't go to the middle of the area that's being eaten let's, let's assume that there are, this, is, this is a, a possible insect related issue that's going on over here if you test in the middle that is where the insects have already eaten your roots they have moved on you now need to go and take this bucket of soapy water and then take it to where the next greenest grass is surrounding that edge so in my case it's right here or right there and then you simply dump the entire load in a spot you don't try and do this sort of you don't do this like a little splishy splash over here and a splishy splash over here you dump the entire lot in one spot maybe move away some of the foam so that you can see what's going on underneath that and then you just sit and wait and see what pops up now in my case i did an insect treatment a couple of months back so i could have something but i don't think so so we just wait and wait and wait to determine what might be going on now while we're waiting for something to actually happen, you must know that this is not the right time to do this test. You need to do this test as the sun is going down. So it must already be dark uh, or relatively dark. A hint of light is just enough for you to see what's going on. You maybe even go out when it's already dark or just gone dark with a flashlight. You do the soap test, you stick a torch on the ground, you have a look at what's coming up. That's the best time to do it in the evenings, just as the sun's gone down. Not now in the middle of the day. I'm doing this so that we can see what's going on. Okay, we're back here now. And I'm happy and disappointed all at the same time. The happy part is that there isn't a single insect that has come up. And that's also the difficult uh, thing to admit here. I do not have any earthworms coming up either which is also a pretty big concern. But it does make sense because the ground is a lot drier, you most likely find that the earthworms don't want to be here. Or maybe there's something else that uh, is leading them to not want to be there. I think it's just moisture because when I hydrate, often it comes, it comes right again. They're in the shade and all the way around the rest of the garden, I've got earthworms all over the place. Again, we're in autumn, so earthworms might just be coming more sparse okay here's one insect and that's a thrip and thrips like that don't do anything to your grass but they may they can damage uh, your your crops to or certain crop types to some large extent yeah so it's just one two thrips that have come up that have come out that's it okay so i'm still not concerned at all I'm just going to wait a little bit longer and then I'll film the rest. Okay, only one spider came up after that. I've let that sit now for quite some time. We'll move on to the rest. So two tests, one for disease, one for insects, soap test for insects and a visual test where you look at your grass, you pull it out and you say, okay, cool, this blade of grass is looking nice and healthy and lush and green and it doesn't have any squiggly looking effects, it doesn't look uh, crooked and abnormal. Well, that was a trigger for the dogs. It doesn't look crooked or abnormal or weird or anything like that, or full of spots, or full of any powdery looking um, substances or uh, rusted looking substances. That then is then disease. So you treat for those two things accordingly. If you still have this dry area like what I do, and if you think that you may have these obvious things, just think a little bit. If you say, okay, cool, I might actually have this sprinkler issue that Travis has got right here. 
then you address it as the hydrophobic issue because it probably is that. And I'm in that time of the year where if my sprinklers don't work correctly, I will see it. It is now dry. March, we usually get around 140 mils of rain uh, and we got 40 this year. Uh, and usually in April, we get about 40 mils of rain and we've had zero where I am. So we are 180 to 200 mils shy in my region over the last two months of what we should have had and what we normally get at this time frame. So if I'm going to be seeing any hydrophobic issues like this, uh, it will be because of my sprinkler system. Um, but remember this, hydrophobic issues can cause a myriad of other issues, like earthworms don't want to be there in the first place. The ground needs to be somewhat moist and nutritious for earthworms to even want to be there. So let's get to that hydrophobic treatment. Okay, so I'm using super wet. Now super wet's application rate for drenching is 30 mils of this product per 100 square meters okay of your of your garden area 100 square meters 10 by 10 meters 30 mils of this with any amount of water the objective though is to put down a lot of water because you want it to be saturated deeply into the ground now depending on how hydrophobic your soil is that rate at which you could put down that volume of water may change so sometimes the best thing to do is to put it into um, a sprayer like this with let's say five liters of water you spray it over that 100 square meters and then you start watering in your ground until you get the desired penetrative result and that might need to happen over a few days even secondly you could use something like a hose end sprayer which is what i'm going to use because last night i already wet my uh, garden area so there is a little bit of moisture on the surface there already so my ability to penetrate the ground is going to be better now maybe just a top tip then for you too so you can use these little hose end sprayers and i'll still only put 30 mils of the product into into this container fill it up with water this is a two liter container it doesn't matter that it's two liters i've got 30 mils of product in here and i'm going to go and spray this over 100 square meters okay just under two liters of water is already in this container i've got 30 mils of super wet that product in here we add it to the container and we'll get spraying Okay, and that's it. So in the video, I've obviously only have shown you a little snippet of me first getting the product over the, uh, the application area. Because remember, if you just keep spraying on one side and you work your way from one end to the other, you may run out of the product or not get an equal amount of the product over the area. So the best thing to do then is to spray the product out over the entire area as evenly as possible and then go back and forth and water it in. And you need to water it in quite heavily and you basically keep watering until you see that pooling effect that's happening. The minute that you get that pooling effect, it means that the ground has done as much as what it can, even with the help of the wetting agent being on it for the first time. And then you just stop. Leave it alone for a couple of hours, come back and do it again. And you'll see that it will again saturate. You come back and do it again. Just keep repeating that process uh, for the next day or two. And then over time, you break it up to being something normal. So what I'm trying to get to um, is the point where I just put a little bit of wetting agent in with each of my foliar application, uh, depending on the product. Put it down, and then I've always always got a little bit of wetting agent happening in the soil all the time. Okay, so you can't really tell any difference now because you shouldn't. It's not magic. It's just the wetting agent going into the soil. The grass will still need to change color on its own, and that will take time. And don't forget, we're now in the middle of autumn. We've got, we're at the end of April, we've got May, then we've got winter. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I think the grass is still doing quite well for this time frame. Plus the fact that I've got a hydrophobic issue. Plus the fact that the rest of the grass is actually really green. I mean, it's all looking quite good. Ooh, a little bit of oxalis, which we're going to tackle probably in the next video or two. I think maybe in the next one, I'm just letting the grass grow a bit. 
I've patched up some holes and the front yard I'll show that to you in a sec before we go front yard is practically grown closed these two holes are going to take some time because they were quite deep okay so that's it hopefully you've learned a little bit about how to look for insects and how to look for the gist of the idea of disease potential disease issues in your in your yard and now you've also learned how to drench your soil to try and treat for hydrophobic issues generally with hydrophobic issues it does mean that there's some underlying issue uh, but like for me for example that underlying issue may be beyond my reach and that's for most people so the the the, the easy thing to do so to speak uh, that is very effective and better anyway even if you had good soil good to have a little bit of wetting agent there regardless is to now go and put down these wetting agents and help everything it improves the efficacy of everything so you save a little bit of money on everything over time anyway hope you found that useful uh, please hit a like and a subscribe and hit the little bell notification so that you're reminded of new videos as they come out and we'll catch you on the next one cheers okay and here's the roadside that's mostly closed up, 11 or 12 days and we're nearly done.